Grant Robertson. Mr Chair, and yes, um, the member uh, ranged around there and probably reflected a little of, of, I think, the overall theme we will see in this debate, which is that the National Party is bereft of any actual ideas about how to grow the economy in a sustainable way. Uh, they're bereft of any ideas about how they're going to ensure that we lift productivity in New Zealand, that we lift exports in New Zealand, that we actually have sustainable growth that's going to lead to good, high-paying, high-value jobs in the future. And instead, we'll get David Bennett's fantasy views on what other political parties might say or do. And um, I think, unfortunately for Mr Bennett, uh, he, if he throws his head in the ring for the mayoralty of Hamilton, uh, he's actually going to struggle alongside Tim McIndoe, his uh, counterpart. I think that contest, we will actually see a meeting of minds in that contest, and David Bennett will come second in that meeting of minds to Tim McIndoe, not for the first time in his life. I might say. Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, the financial statements have some numbers in them that the National Party, if they bothered to read them or even talk about them, might be able to put up there and say, this is why we think we're doing well. They can point to some growth rates, which look at around the 2 to 2.5 to 3 per cent level, and they can say, well, you know, we're doing all right. We've got the economy growing. But any exploration of those numbers will tell you that the New Zealanders who every single day say, but I'm not feeling the value of that growth rate. My life doesn't feel like it's getting better with, that you would expect it to with a growth rate of around 3%. There's a reason for that. Because when we actually look at per capita growth in New Zealand, per person, how is the economy going? It's flat. It's barely moving. It was described by a Westpac economist as sluggish. Most commentators look at it and say, this is not an economy that's growing sustainably. It's barely moving at all. And that's the truth. The growth that we've got is simply a result of there being more people here. And that's not sustainable, Mr Chair. You can't just keep growing the economy by adding more and more people to it. At some point, the economy has to grow because we're more productive, because we're smarter, because we're more innovative. But that's not the story of the national government. It's the story of a complacent, out-of-touch government that doesn't actually have the wherewithal to say, let's stop the belief that there's some kind of great trickle-down economic growth that's going to support everybody and actually get in behind New Zealanders, grow wealth from the ground up and give everybody a chance to share in prosperity. And so what we now see under National is actually that working people's share in the economy is declining that actually those people who've already aggregated wealth, they're the ones who are succeeding, and the value of working people's wages goes down. And in the last uh, set of accounts that the government put out, real national disposable income has now dropped, not only for the second or third quarter in a row, but for the whole year. So the real value of the income that New Zealanders per person have is dropping. We're getting poorer as a nation every day because this government is complacently relying on the fact that more people are coming into New Zealand at the moment to, to pretend that the economy is sustainably growing when it is clearly not. We are getting poorer by the day under this government. So what would help drive the economy? What should we be looking for in these financial statements? What about exports? Well, we're not seeing it there. The government sets a lofty target of increasing exports to 40% of GDP. And what's that? Promise, yeah, a promise. It wasn't just a target, Mr. Baker, you're right. It was a promise. And where have we gone? We've gone backwards. They started out at 30%, they're now under 30%. 27-28% of GDP is the value of exports. That's not an economy that's going to go forward and create high-value, high-paying jobs. And the government crows about tourism, and tourism is an important industry for New Zealand, but it is not on its own a route to prosperity. It doesn't provide the high-value, high-wage jobs that New Zealanders need to sustain our standard of living in the future. And there's no evidence from this government that they're investing in those high-value jobs, that they're getting alongside industry to say, how can we move ourselves up the value chain? Why are we still continually reliant on raw commodities and the wave that we have to surf when those, the value of those commodities goes down is now hitting the regions of New Zealand. We have three or four regions of New Zealand in recession because this government has sat back 
and allowed us to think that we were wealthy while we rode that commodity wave. We as a country are not. We are going backwards because we haven't invested in those industries. We haven't diversified the economy sufficiently so that New Zealanders can feel confident that there is a sustainable future. Uh, Alistair Scott. Thank you, Mr.